In this lecture, we will learn about nanomechanics. Because of emergence of nanomaterials, it becomes important to learn about what is happening at the nanoscale and to also extract properties, mechanical properties such as hardness, modulus, how does it vary with respect to different nano phases which are present in a bulk nanostructured material. So, in this lecture, we will learn about nanomechanics, specifically about nano indentation in order to extract uh, hardness and Young's modulus out of these materials. Uh, nano mechanics is the field of technology which involves forces to in the order of nano newtons or, or displacements which are to the order of nanometers. So, that is why nano mechanics will deal with materials which are nano uh, uh, which have a nano size nanometer size. So, that we can specifically design this instrumentation. So, that we can precisely measure what are the displacements or the forces which have been incurred by that particular phase which is in the nanometer size range. Uh, it also is utilized for fabrication uh, of new materials or scanning a particular property out of it or scanning the morphology or the topography out of it. Also sensing because uh, once we talk about nanotechnology, we need also need to sense what sort of forces which are uh, inc incurring on a particular, uh, particular material. So, in order to comprise the fabrication, scanning, sensing, the nano mechanics becomes a very, very essential tool. Uh, learning about mechanics, nano mechanics. It can again be a uh, non-contact, uh, in, in that case we can utilize van der Waals forces, which is again in the uh, non-contact mode, like we can utilize uh, atomic force microscopy and we can utilize the non-contact mode in terms of imaging the topography or it can again be in the contact mode, like, uh, like for nano indentation. So, coming in contact with the material and then extracting the properties or mechanical properties out of it. So, we can see nano mechanics is a very, very essential uh, way of uh, learning about uh, what is the response of a nano material. It can be nano phases and how do they incorporate in terms of evincing the bulk properties. So, we can have a nano, nano properties of each and every individual phase plus contribution of some uh, additional forces such as it can be just porosity or, uh, in, uh, or say interaction between the two grains which are in nano size. So, that can finally evince the bulk property. So, once we know what is the response at a nanometer length scale we can somehow build build them up by using a multi line scale hierarchy to a to achieve a bulk property out of that so nano mechanics is a very very essential uh, way means of comprising what is happening at nano scale and predicting what can happen at the bulk scale and again as we see that it is utilized for fabrication or even scanning or even sensing majorly in this lecture we learn about nano indentation so let us see uh, about that so, nano, nano indentation uh, is, is, is utilized for measuring the mechanical properties of thin films, coatings or even smaller volumes. So, see if you if we have a microstructure and where the faces are in the nano regime and if you want to extract what is happening uh, or what is the change in the mechanical property because of those particular faces, we need to see what, what is the property of individual faces like we have phase A. So, like we have phase A and we have phase B and assuming that the overall length scale is couple of nanometer. So, so then once we make a tensile bar specimen, it will give us a property of the bulk. So, we can get a overall property of the bulk using the tensile bar specimen, which can give provide us modulus uh, of the system or stress strain relationship. But if we want to see what is happening, what is the contribution from each and every individual phase like of phase A and phase B, we need to do the nano indentation. So, we can evince or ex we can extract the properties out of individual phases. Uh, again, if we have a coating, if you have a very thin coating to the order of couple of nanometers or sub micron, uh, sub, sub micron range, it will say if it is very adherent to the substrate. So, we have a substrate and we have a coating. And you want to see what is the response of this coating with respect to the substrate, we, we might do a tensile bar specimen, a tensile bar testing. But if you want to see what is the contribution of coating alone, then it is very, very hard because even if you do indentation, a micro indentation, that might actually have some influence from the substrate also because the coating thickness has to be independent because if we are, uh, the thickness of this coating has to be independent, it has to be thick enough so that we do not see any response from the substrate. But that may not be in reality, that may not occur in reality when we have a sub micron size coating on a particular substrate. 
So, in those cases nano notation becomes very very essential because if you want to extract the properties the indent or the depth of the indent should be smaller than at least 7 to 10 times of the entire coating thickness. So, that in that way we can avoid the contribution from the substrate and we can get properties only with, with respect to the coating and not the substrate. So, in order to calculate or measure the mechanical properties of thin films or coatings or even smaller volumes. Uh, so, in this case if we have a phase A and phase B these are very very small volumes because we are talking about grain size which is to the order of couple of nanometers. So, we can individually go to a particular spot and do the indentation at those particular points. So, what we can get is property with property of that individual grain only. Otherwise, uh, micro indentation what it will do it the its size itself is so big that it will basically go on to. So, if you if you do a micro indent it might comprise a much bigger regime of indent indent and we get an average property whereas, nano indentation will give us a local property indent which is micron size will give us a bulk or a average property. So, that is why it, it becomes very very essential to utilize nano indentation and nano indentation uh, through in, uh, instrumented indentation it means we are consistently measuring the load which is being incurred on a material as well as measuring the indent depth and that can help us evaluate the hardness as well as the elastic modulus via consist consistently measuring the force and displacement. Also we can uh, have a special resolution, so we can also probe the surface uh, using this particular uh, probe tip and we can also achieve a very good special resolution in this case. So, we can measure property which, which is very very nearby uh, the, we can measure the properties of the nearby grains. So, that is what is meant by special resolution that it is very good special resolution. So, we can uh, measure properties from localized region. So, we can have uh, uh, an array of very fine array of points where, where we can extract the properties and we can get very good properties along the each and every pixel as well. So, that will give us provide us a very very good special resolution. So, nano indentation is a very essential tool in terms of extracting the properties mechanical properties of say thin films or coatings or even small volumes using this particular technique via measurement of instrumented via instrumented indentation it means we are consistent continuously measuring the load and the displacement and through this we can also achieve a very good special resolution. So, nano indentation is nothing but a continuous measurement of force which is to the order of nano newton to milli newton. So, we can uh, utilize this nano mechanics. So, that will uh, have a uh, load range of around nano newtons, but we can go up to micro newtons or even milli newtons in case uh, when we require and displacements are, are to the order of nanometer to it can even go up to micrometer depending on the sensitivity we require from the instrument or kind of uh, the average property which we require from the substrate. So, that is what uh, is basically being attained via nano indentation and it is called nano indentation because the overall depth range are in the order of nanometers couple of hundred it can even go uh, hundreds or uh, hundreds of thousands of nanometer as well depending on the probe uh, which we utilize or the load which we basically utilize. Uh, again in this case we are measuring load and displacement throughout this process as a load versus displacement curve. So, we have a load just given by P and displacement given by H. So, we can directly measure the load as soon as we are loading it the indentation depth keep, keeps increasing and then we can consistently measure the load displacement curve. So, we have load versus displacement in the matter and then while unloading also it can have various responses it can uh, it can have some elastic and plastic contribution which we which we will talk about uh, later on through which we can also calculate certain mechanical properties such as hardness, Young's modulus, we can also do some stress strain studies. We can also see what kind of stresses are being incurred by using conospherical tape. We can also see, we can also convert the load into stresses and uh, displacement to strain. So that can provide us what is the stress strain, which can uh, be in, uh, how it can be similar to that. What we can achieve uh, achieve from a real engineering test of a bulk sample. We can also utilize time dependent creep measurements, either via maintaining the stress constant or seeing the temporal uh, temporal via seeing the temporal response. Uh, or measure, measuring the strain that can occur or the strain, st uh, stress relaxation that can occur at certain load. So, it can also provide us time dependent creep uh, measurements. Also, we can uh, utilize to find fracture toughness. It means once we are indenting a ceramic material, 
it will eventually develop some cracking it can be median cracking or it can be radial cracking so that from that we can always measure what is the toughness of the material so that is a, a semi empirical uh, empirical measure way of measuring the fracture toughness also we can measure the plastic and the elastic energy of the sample so if we have a load displacement curve we know that this is the elastic response so which is being recovered in instantaneously so this is nothing but the elastic response and this is uh, this is the one which is a plastic response as it uh, as it it will recover with time so we have loading so this this part is loading and this part is unloading so once we load the sample indentation depth will keep increasing and then as soon as we uh, unload it we can see the unloading part is coming down like this so it is loading and then unloading will basically come down out here so this much is the strain which has been recovered so this much strain is uh, is the one which has been recovered so it is the elastic part and the one which is which will recover later or which will remain as it is is the plastic part so through this we can also calculate the elastic and plastic energies of the sample material so we can see nano indentation it utilizes it, it it utilizes continuous measurement of forces in the range of nanonewton to millinewtons and the displacements are again in the range of nanometer to the micrometer range but mainly in the nanometer range that's why we call it nano indentation and we continuously measure load and displacement to get this particular load in load displacement curve from which we can calculate such as hardness young's modulus we can also convert them into stress strain plot depending on the once we have the area function available or how we can calculate it to the force uh, or the stress and then the strain we can also utilize to uh, utilize nano indentation to find time displacement creep uh, measurements uh, by varying temperatures uh, by con by holding the sam holding the material at certain stress level and so on or seeing the stress relaxation that can occur so we can have many feedback lo uh, feedback loops associated with this particular uh, testing to calculate these properties we can also calculate fracture toughness as we said uh, to to uh, basically utilize some semi empirical formulas and see what kind of cracking is occurring in the material upon a certain loading is being applied to it and we can also uh, find plastic and elastic energies of the sample so this uh, provides the overall potential of this particular uh, testing techniques uh, which is called nano indentation so how does a nano indenter will work so we have a indenter it can have a berkowitz tip which is a uh, pyramidal tip or wicker wicker tip uh, or it can also be cono spherical tip which is being impressed onto the sample sample surface and what happens is the indenter load and displacement will occur and those are recorded because this is a instrumented indentation and we record the load and the displacement and we see the loading and the unloading cycle that has been that has been recorded in a continuous or a even a step stepwise mode and the depth starts varying around uh, to or around several uh, nanometers to it can be go, it can go even to micrometer so we as as i said earlier that we have a loading and unloading which is uh, which is occurring and that is being recorded continuously by the instrument and then we can measure measure the hardness which is which is given by the load divided by the projected area so we can measure the hardness through the measurement of uh, the load and the area so through this we can calculate the hardness very easily this is a very normal principle of measuring the hardness so the first property is that we utilize a particular indenter it can be berkowitz wicker or it can be cono spherical uh, indenter as well that is impressed on a surface we measure the continuous loading and the unloading out here and right now we don't know what is the area of the indenter which is being impressed so it requires certain measurements as we will see later on so measurement of area or the contact area is not easy as we can see in a regular bulk testing because the because when, once we talk about a tip berkowitz or wicker or even cono spherical tip they may not have a perfect geometry so to take care of that we always uh, utilize the standardization or calibration of that particular tip to measure the contact area with respect to the depth of the material so that that is very much required in any nano indentation instrumentation and the depth is basically varying that's why we, we need to measure what is the final depth or the depth which is what is the relation of p versus h so through this we can calculate the hardness which which is which is obtained by the applied load divided by the projected area so we can calculate the hardness using nano indentation so a typical ph curve uh, basically will look like that we have a uh, loading so we have uh, we can see that so wh what what do we have we have an indenter initially so we have indenter so assuming the geometry is like this and this is a substrate so we have this indenter 
and the substrate. So, initially it will come in contact. So, once we start impressing the, this indenter on the substrate, so we have a load, we have a indentation depth. So, once we start impressing it, it will start getting into the substrate and it will reach a substrate and this is the indenter. So, we, we start loading it. So, as the load increases, the indentation depth also starts increasing. So, we are uh, we are uh, impressing this indenter on the substrate and it will reach a certain depth. So, that is called H max. This is once it has reached a maximum depth, it is called H max. And geometry of this particular the, cur the curvature of this one will depend on the material, it can vary from material to material. So, for very brittle materials it might look like this, for little softer or some hardening ma ha hardened material it might look very different. So, it can have various geometries uh, as it is. So, let us see, uh, let us uh, take a typical shape something like this. So, we have reached now H max and what will happen and then we start unloading it. So, in the first stage we are loading it and if we want to hold it the load might remain constant. So, in this case we might require to relax the material and in certain cases to avoid the viscoelastic effects. So, but right now let us not consider that. Let us just consider that once we have impressed the sample we are unloading it. So, second step that it has, it has reached a maximum and then third step we start unloading it. So, in first case we have uh, impressed the sample. So, we have certain maximum depth. So, let us see this is the, so we have a substrate and this is the indenter and this height is nothing but H max. Now, what happens is uh, we, we start unloading the sample, we start unloading the material. So, what, what do we have? We, we receive a unloading part like this. So, the slope of this one, if we take the slope of this one, and while it while the length it has recovered it is called h final this point is called h final so what do we have so we, we had h max after unloading we have received uh, which is called h final and then the slope of this curve is given by uh, s that is the uh, compliance part of it so we we see it dp by dh uh, and incorporating this, uh, we can uh, we can also see that also the as soon as we the material is recovered in instantaneously some uh, to certain uh, HF, but the overall contact depth, the overall con because what has happened this uh, depth has been achieved by when the indenter has been recovered at the same time it has also gone under some plastic recovery as well. So we can see that the elastic uh, just taking the elastic recovery part, we can see that ideally it, it should have gone out here. But so HC is given as H max minus the strain it is incorporated into P max by S. So actually this is H HC and incorporating this particular formula we can see that HC is basically nothing but it might come up somewhere here. So, what is happening is once we uh, once we indent the material we are seeing the H max or this is the P max and H max is being uh, uh, being achieved here. We indent the, in, indent the, uh, indent the uh, sample. So, we achieve H max it undergoes a recovery which is uh, which is the final depth which is called H f and elastic elastic part is basically given by H c, but the real H c which is the overall contact uh, contact depth. Uh, that, that that is being given by H c. So, we have this particular slope which is given by d p by d h the elastic part plus the strain which is incurred in the material due to plasticity is also uh, being incorporated. So, we have H max minus epsilon p max by s. So, this is the contact uh, contact depth uh, which is achieved after the indentation when uh, when material has undergone a maximum depth of H max, it is a uh, compliance of uh, S and uh, the overall H which is being also taken from here is basically d p by d s. So, that part is being incorporated here with respect to strain. So, we can see the total H c is given by H max minus epsilon p max by 
S. So, that is the uh, criteria for uh, the uh, for finding the H C. So, we can see then the, by the load indentation depth we can uh, we can we can see what is happening that we are we are first taking the indenter and pressing it on the material it is achieving a uh, achieving a maximum depth at a maximum load then while it is recovering it recovers uh, it, it it is also recovering both elastic as well as plastic recovery so it it some part of it, it has been uh, recovered that is given by hf that comprises of both the elastic as well as the plastic part so the elastic part is given by hc so we also have to uh, reduce that particular part from the actual uh, contact depth so hc will be equal to h max minus epsilon uh, dp by ds or p by s so that part is ba basically being given out here so this is the formula which we can uh, which we have utilized uh, earlier on so nano indentation uh, it is very very essential that uh, we derive the information from ph curve uh, and also uh, what is happening at just at the recovery is that that is the elastic portion the true elastic part is nothing but the part which has just been release so this is the real elastic part which is which is basically specific to this ph curve so we need to derive information from the ph curve and e or the young's modulus elastic modulus and the hardness is derived from the oliver farr method so we first have to have a relationship between the uh, hf and the p so we have instantaneous depth uh, h hf is the final depth of the contact depth and b and m are the fitting parameters and through that we saw that we can calculate hardness via p max by uh, ac or the contact or the projected area and the reduced modulus is given by root pi by 2 as is the compliance and then by divided by under root ac uh, so that that part we can see uh, we can achieve it out the uh, out, uh, out out by that method and again we can get also get the we can get the reduced modulus uh, reduced modulus given by 1 minus nu i square of the indenter divided by the modulus of the indenter which is that for a diamond and then for plus 1 minus nu, nu s square divided by E s that is for the sample. So, this is called reduced modulus because it is comprising the this form formulation for indenter as well as that for a sample. So, essentially the samples modulus should be little higher than the E r value. So, that is why we are uh, we call it as a, as a reduced modulus which is being obtained from this particular equation. So, that this is the part we can see uh, out here that we have reduced modulus which can be obtained from uh, this particular part. So, S is nothing but the stiffness which is being uh, obtained from this particular equation. So, we can see that P is given by alpha H minus H F to the power M where H is the instantaneous, in, instantaneous uh, indentation penetration depth, H F is the final depth, P is the load. So, m and alpha are nothing but the fitting parameters as we saw earlier. So, we have p as the applied load, alpha and m are the fitting parameters and h max is the final displacement which is given by this particular term and this h c which is actually out here. So, we have a elastic part and then we can identify h c as h max minus epsilon p by s. So, we can see the stiffness uh, part is being uh, in the denominator by load and everything else. So, this is the overall uh, relationship between the load displacement curve for the nano indentation. So, we can see once we apply the load, we have a loading part which basically goes on like this and the unloading part. So, this is the part which is instantaneously recovered. So, this is the elastic region and this is the plastic region. So, plastic, so plastic energy can also be calculated by calculating area under the curve. So, we can see that this area is nothing but energy the plastic energy and this energy is called a elastic. So, we can also compare the uh, we, we can also compare the energies of this particular these two regions to uh, to basically compare two different materials how much elastic energy they can store or how much plastic energy they can store also while keeping the relationship constant. So, for a particular loading or particular uh, penetration depth we need to have this comparison and just uh, stating it forward. Uh, calculation of area or the contact area is very very uh, typical uh, very very critical for this hardness and modulus evaluation hardness is given by p maximum by a maximum contact and modulus is given by root pi by 2 p and the stiffness is again given by p dash is nothing but dp by uh, dp by dh and a is the area of contact uh, for, for this one 
So, what is happening is uh, calculating this part is pretty, pretty much difficult and that depends on the geometry of the indenter as well. So, for a spherical indenter, h of contact is much lesser than the radius of the indenter. So, we can get a contact is equal to 2 pi approximately 2 pi r h of the contact depth. So, this thing is little bit easier, but for Sharp and Berkowitz indenter, a contact area comes out to be 24.5 h square. So, we can see that from depth or penetration depth itself, we can now calculate the area of contact. So, from so, from depth of contact, we can calculate the area of contact. Also, we can see that for a cone, for a spherical indenter, the contact area depends on the radius, where in this case, uh, where in the case of Wicker or Berkowitz indenter, it is independent of the any other entity. So, just by once we know the edge of contact, we can always calculate area of contact. But these are, are for a pure or a real or, or a for a or for a any defect free Wicker or Berkowitz indenter. But in reality, what happens is the overall geometry of this indenter is not uh, always perfect. So, what happens is that we also add some correction terms, uh, some higher order correction terms as well in this case uh, for Berkowitz or uh, Berkowitz indenter or even spherical indenter. So, we, we will see that we are not incorporating it out here, but the calibration always requires that we also add some correction terms along with this particular A contact. So, eventually what we get is a redu reduced modulus which is which comprises 1 by modulus of the indenter as well as 1 by modulus of the sample. So, this is one more uh, typical part of it because then E sample will be little higher than the modulus value what we are getting finally, because once the response is being obtained it is the response of sample plus that of a indenter. So, we if, if we are calculating the modulus the kind of resistance which is being offered is by both by the tip as well as by the sample. So, we always need to extract or subtract the contribution which is coming from the tip. So, that is the reason we also need to subtract this part from the from the reduced reduce modulus. So, what we get is little higher modulus for the sample. So, how does the nano indentation works? Uh, initially, we uh, need to measure the overall contact surface area. So, we have certain uh, equation available for that semi uh, where is uh, psi is the semi apical angle for the co for the conical indenter. So, in case of Berkowitz indenter, we always need to have a uh, have a equivalent uh, conical indenter. So, this is for a conical indenter this value psi. So, for a Berkowitz indenter we always have a, uh, a comparative value of psi for a for a conical indenter. So, depending on the angularity of or the geometry of this uh, indenter Berkowitz or Wicker indenter we will always have psi for a comparative conical. So, that it behaves like a conical indenter as well. So, we can see the a, a depends on the pi h square 10 square psi and through this we can uh, through the depth sensing we can always get the value of E which is basically determined from the unloading part. So, we can see for loading and unloading this is the region which is truly elastic. So, this region is truly elastic. So, from this region we can always uh, identify what is the slope and uh, we can convert it back to the reduced modulus from this particular uh, dependencies and also once we have this indenter we can also generate some half penny cracks which can be made in our radial. So, we can see once we have a indenter it will generate a very dramatic or drastic uh, plastic field around it. So, that part again depends on the geometry of the indenter. So, in case of uh, Berkowitz or Wicker indenter this uh, plastic region, region has certain length uh, certain uh, depth as well uh, or it can all for a brittle material it can directly initiate a crack as well. So, we can either have some sort of a plastic or an elastic regime with certain uh, depths uh, which are being uh, already been uh, modeled uh, by certain researchers or it can also generate crack when the material is very very brittle. So, it can also help opening the uh, crack as well. So, that is given by this particular force uh, or the load which is required to open up this particular crack. So, uh, so we can see this we are once we are loading it we can unload it loading unloading. So, from that we can always find the relationship or the hardness uh, dependence of the load. So, we, we can also achieve a very marginal difference in the hardness because of the uh, kind of load which we utilize and that is given by the hardness is given by load by the area and then from that we can uh, we can always identify what is the A value from the semi apical angle for a conical indenter. So, from the depth we can always find what is the contact area and through that we can always find what is the hardness. And again uh, the modulus can also be obtained uh, once we have this particular relationship available of P versus uh, 
h minus h max. So, we have p is equal to some uh, fitting parameter h minus h final to the power of uh, say some m. So, through that we can always identify this relationship of d p by d h and once we know a we can always fit in fit in here to find the modulus and this is nothing but a reduced modulus. So, we always need to back calculate the modulus of the sample also. So, this is the overall idea of obtaining the hardness and Young's modulus from the nano indentation. Uh, from just to say how what sort of uh, constants we can achieve from uh, a projected we saw that it was 24.5 h square. So, for a Berkowitz projected area we can always go about calculating the psi which is uh, for a Berkowitz trip at the equivalent uh, psi angle is 65.3 for Vickers it is a uh, 68. So, depending on the geometry we can always uh, find what is the projection area for a Berkowitz tip which comes out 24.56 h square whereas, for Vickers it comes out to be around 24.5 504 uh, h square and for Berkowitz tip as, as, as I said it is uh, 65.3 is the uh, equivalent uh, semi apical angle which is for a uh, conical indenter and uh, equivalent semi angle for a conical indenter is around 70.3 as well. So, semi angle uh, is different than the semi apical angle and this provides a similar uh, projected area to depth ratio as that for a weaker indenter. So, by utilizing this particular uh, geometry we can also see that we can uh, also utilize this uh, conical angle with respect to alpha. So, we can get alpha of 70.3 as well in this particular case. And just by saying that uh, by measuring the constant displacement mode also say if you have two different materials uh, material A with much higher modulus and much higher hardness and then second material is B which is much lower modulus and uh, very low hardness as well. So, just comparing them we can see that how uh, different uh, how different of a pH curve we can obtain in these two cases. So, in this case if we are obtaining say just uh, just for example, say if you have load of uh, to the order of milli newtons and displacement to the order of couple of hundreds. So, we can see 100, 200 nanometer and say nano uh, say we can go up to say around 50s of uh, milli newton. So, we can see that uh, at say around 200, 250 we can achieve uh, a curve and then it will also revert back. So, what, what we are seeing in this case is that for a very high load we are getting a very low displacement. So, we have h nanometer, we have a depth of around uh, 150, 150 nanometer or so for a load of 15 million tons. So, in this case we, we can get very high uh, modulus as well as very high hardness because the maximum depth also is very very low in this particular case. So, it is a to the order of couple of uh, say around 250 nan nanometer for a load as high as, high as 50 milli newton. So, in this case we can see it is uh, it, it is might be true for a ceramic material also because the also because the kind of recovery it is uh, it is undergoing it is also very very elastic in nature. So, we, we can see that much of the elastic uh, much of the uh, load uh, depth has been recovered. So, it is more like a elastic material. So, that is why we can see uh, much of it has been recovered as well, but in the second case what, what we can see that even smaller loads say around 10 uh, tens of milli newton can generate very high uh, very high uh, displacement also the recovery also is very very low. So, we can see say the curve is like this. So, curve is like this. So, in this case we are achieving say similar uh, similar uh, sort of displacement, but in this case we can see it is around 300 or 250 nanometer and around say tens of uh, 5 to tens of uh, milli newtons. So, what we are seeing here is this is the load and this is the depth nanometer. So, we can see that very low loads are creating the similar sort of displacement. So, in this case we in the first case we, we had 50 milli newtons to give us displacement of 250. In the second case 5 to 10 milli newtons are giving us the displacement of around 250 to 300 nanometer also also the the recovery is very very low the displacement is very very high it means the hardness is very very low and second case the recovery is pretty less it means the slope is very very less so in that case slope is little a little bit higher so in that case we can see that uh, e value is pretty 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 low it means the recovery is uh, very very less so when uh, when slope is high 
the compliance is pretty high it means the material is lesser elastic so that that part we can see here so we can see that there is much more very very less of uh, elasticity in comparison to that of the first case so we can see the difference in the modulus and difference in the hardness difference in hard hardness is arising because of similar loads say uh, say in this case similar displacement this for a lower is achieved in lower load in this case it achieved at higher load. So, that is why we can see that in constant displacement mode say in this case we had the displacement constant at, at say around uh, 250 to 300 nanometer. So, for a lower load we can achieve that particular uh, depth in the first case it is at much more higher load. So, that is telling the difference in the pH curve itself what we can achieve for two different materials. So, in first case we have a high modulus we see a very a very very uh, lower slope in second case it is very high slope uh, unloading slope also the recovery is pretty high in the first case in comparison to second case. So, that can uh, tell us about the difference between two different materials. So, fracture toughness measurement can 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 be done by uh, this particular technique as well line orientation. So, basically we people utilize this Lawrence Evans and Marshall's equation which is which is basically been earlier done by uh, these three uh, scientists that basically takes care of the crack length that um, that em emanates when an indentation is being done. So, for mainly for brittle ceramics the indentation crack which has been generated is assumed to be a, around half penny shape and under those conditions system will behave like a center loaded half penny crack from which the stress intensity factor k can be evaluated as p r divided by c to the power 1.5 whereas p r is the crack opening force and c is the crack line that is being generated. So, crack opening force p r which is produced by the residual stress field that results when the peak indentation load uh, is starts to relax and that is being matched by the fracture toughness of the material itself and psi is nothing but a semi angle or the semi uh, semi apical angle of the indenter and hard h and e are the hardness and modulus of the material. So, through that we can also see that how p r can be related to the modulus and hardness and that is being utilized in calculating the fracture toughness of the material as well. So, through that we can calculate we can calculate what is the crack opening force that is being resulting out from here and then from that we can al always calculate what is the fracture toughness which can which is responsible for this uh, crack restriction. So, overall fracture toughness we indent the material a crack is uh, effectively generated and when the crack is being restricted that is the characteristic of a material that for a particular load when the stress intensity factor matches the fracture toughness uh, basically the crack will tend to stop and for by measuring that particular entity we can always find what is the fracture toughness of the material. And for this ceramics we always assume that the crack is a uh, half penny crack and then uh, we require certain load to stre stretch it further. And again the value of a certain constant which is like alpha which is which is already been determined for say Berkowitz or Wicker indenter, indenter by using certain semi empirical equations and again they depend on the geometry of the indenter also because they induce a different stress field at the tip of the indenter. So, evaluating that also is very very critical for measuring the fracture toughness. So, in this case uh, again there have been some more modifications to to decide what is happening in exactly in case of a indenter in, in indentation crack. So, we can see for a Berkowitz tip we get a uh, we get an impression and then we also start seeing some riddle crack which can uh, emanate from uh, from the corners and l is the length of the crack from the uh, from the from the edge and then c is the length from the center and utilizing those formulation we can see that l and c they are being utilized in the equation alpha is again uh, the geometrical constant and e and h are the modulus and the hardness of the material so, fracture toughness can be calculated via using this particular semi empirical equation which utilizes the crack which is emanating from the uh, from the edges and also the its length from the center. So, we can always find the fracture toughness of the material by using nano inundation technique by utilizing a force enough to initiate the crack and that crack is being basically being restricted. And again just coming to the Berkowitz indenter the uh, the semi apical angle of 65.3 or equivalent angle of uh, 70.3 also is out there. So, we can basically what we can see here is the overall uh, a projection area how is dependent on the uh, semi apical angles that is 
and it comes out to be 24.56. So, just to show a relation, what is happening is once we have an indented kind of projected area, which is uh, the projected area uh, on this particular part. So, we can see the overall projected area will come out basically for this particular field and then we can see what is the overall uh, re relation between all of them and then uh, measuring the edge in terms of uh, A, what is the width of this particular uh, edge and from that we can always calculate what is the project projected area that is being resulting from this uh, Berkowitz indenter and that comes out to be around 24.56. So, seeing the relations, uh, relations out here, we have 1060 that is L by uh, A by 2 and then uh, we can always have 1060 in terms of uh, the values and then we can see relationship between L and A and then the projected area is given by A L by 2. So, that results the overall uh, geometry and then we also relate B and H by utilizing this semi, uh, semicon, uh, semi apical uh, angle that is H by B and then we can always relate what is H and then uh, related to the and achieve its value and then uh, then finally find the projection area from that by utilizing H and A and then we can finally get the overall relationship out here. Again there are many many unhindered which are also available like Berkowitz or Kono spherical and they have their own functionality or the own uh, dependence. Why? Because uh, what is happening is like in Berkowitz tip we have very sharp tip and very sharp tip will induce very high uh, plastic strains in case of a, uh, of a hard hardening material. It can induce cracking very effectively in brittle ceramics as well. So, uh, basically it is very good for measuring modulus and hardness values, but in this case elastic to plastic transition is not clear because once we have uh, plastic fields around it and elastic fields around it, the transition when it is going from plastic to elastic will be very very unclear or it is not clear in the case of Berkowitz tip, but we can get very nice indents. Uh, but for Berkowitz it will be uh, uh, it will be like pyramidal, so it will be more like this. So, we can see very nice uh, impressions uh, using the Berkowitz tip and it will be very very sharp. So, this can provide us a very good uh, estimation of the elastic and plastic uh, so the, the hardness and the modulus values. So, that is very good for measurement of the modulus and the hardness values, but sometimes many times we also need to see what is happening particularly to the material. If you want to utilize what is the stress strain relationship, then we want to go for a conospherical material which will which actually appears more like this. That, that gives us a precise indication or precise relationship between the depth and the contact. So, we can always estimate what is the stress and strain that is emanating from the tip to with respect to the material. In this case, the stress field is so high that it is very hard to predict the relationship between the stress that is being generated via implication of this or impression of this particular type of tip in case of Berkowitz tip. Whereas in conospherical tip, it is much more easier and tip geometry is not very sharp. Uh, also, the spherical surface is not always perfect. So, that also is some problem with that. So, we always require some uh, calibration uh, to be done for measurement of the uh, contact area, but this is again very, very good for uh, doing for imparting very low stress value on a sample surface. So, like if you have to measure a very soft sample like polymers or biological sample, conospherical tip might be very, very effective in measuring the modulus uh, or hardness of that particular material, whereas sharp Berkowitz indenter tip will just start to penetrate those soft materials. So, evaluating soft materials, it might be much better to use a conospherical tip, but for little harder materials such as uh, ceramics or metals, Berkowitz tip might work much better in comparison to conospherical tips. So, there are certain gives and takes uh, between uh, the kind of geometries which we uh, geometry of indented that we finally, uh, tap. So, this is also very very essential component to be considered. And some cases we also require a mapping of the surface like uh, we can have an indentation done, then we also want to see what is the topography of that particular indent. So, we can utilize either something called atomic force microscopy or we can also utilize the same tip as imaging source by, by using scanning probe microscope. So, we can use the same tip and we can scan it more like an SEM instead of electron beam here we are just sending the indenter itself to scan the surface. So, in conjunction with uh, atomic force microscope the narrow indentation can be very very essential for mapping the surface. So, we can see where we have indented the surface 
and which surface or which phase is resulting that particular mechanical property. Also it also in AFM objective also enables to simultaneously measure a nanometer length scale because once you are utilizing a scanning probe microscope that might be very hard that might also damage the surface whereas in AFM we can utilize very low forces and image the surfaces as low as 1 nanometer spatial resolution. So, they can provide us very good pictures also of the indent also of the surface. So, a simultaneous nanometer scale type of imaging can be done by using atomic force microscope and those limits can uh, be little uh, coarser when we utilize a scanning probe microscope. At the same time, we can also know exactly where the measurement is coming from. If we scan the surface using AFM, we can exactly pinpoint which finer microstructural feature is, a, is resulting that particular mechanical property, whether it is coming from a nanogram, coming from a precipitate, coming from an interface or coming from a reinforcement. So, we can exactly pinpoint what the AFM, uh, what AFM information is providing, we can exactly pinpoint by seeing the indentation where it is coming from. So, that addition of AFM becomes very, very important in nano indenter, though we are, we are getting the property, uh, mechanical property using nano indenter, AFM is telling us exactly where it is coming from. And also nano indentation has been utilized in many, many different research areas for evaluating mechanical properties of bulk nanostructured components and specifically for MEMS, my, micro electronic mechanical systems or nano electro electronic mechanical systems biosensors, even tissue engineering. So, we can test the mechanical properties of a healthy, say healthy tissues or uh, rough cartilages or say toucan beak and so many things of biological entities. Also to utilize uh, mechanical properties of finding mechanical properties of carbon nanotube based composites. So, once we have a reinforcement of a very fine entity such as carbon nanotube, we want to incorporate what is happening at the interface, what is the role of carbon nanotube in improving the mechanical properties such as modulus or hardness those have been widely utilized or uh, illustrated by various, research, res, various res, researchers. In shape memorialized again we can have some uh, sort of uh, martensitic transformation or twinning that can occur. So, those can also be very well identified by using nano indentation. Also laser, ultra fast laser machining and material synthesis. So, what sort of changes that might occur that can also be interrupted by the nano indentation. So, we can see there are myriad applications of nano indentation which can be utilized in the exact application of these uh, particular uh, fields and then uh, engineering the in, and basically engineering it in terms of uh, certain applications such as biosensors or even tissue engineering or utilizing this composites for certain applications NEMS, MEMS or saying uh, about the quality control by utilizing this particular techniques. So, in summary we can see that instrumented indentation is, uh, indentation is utilized to determine the mechanical properties which is hardness and modulus by using Oliver Fur method. And depending on the geometry of this uh, particular tip, uh, we can utilize Berkowitz, Wicker or spheric, conospherical tip for certain various applications. Mainly the indentation is utilized for uh, evaluating the mechanical properties, hardness, modulus. We can map the surface once we have an attachment of say AFM, atomic force microscope. We can also see what is the role of particular phase or particular grain or particular uh, precipitate in dictating the overall mechanical property. We can also read about, uh, we can also learn about the stress relaxation that is occurring or even the creep deformation that is occurring in a material. So, this is a very strong technique uh, to give us provide a certain uh, mechanical property evaluation of uh, these nano materials. Also tip geometry as we saw it can have very strong effect on the substrate and uh, that uh, like Berkowitz tip is very good for uh, metal and ceramics whereas, uh, conospherical tip might be good for polymers and biological materials for extracting the modulus and hardness. We can also do surface imaging by using a AFM or atomic force microscope or even scanning probe microscope and that will tell us exactly where the data is coming from to map the surface. So, we can once we map the surface we can somehow related to the multi scale uh, hierarchy like if we have nano entities how they club up together, how do, how do they combine te together to give, uh, give us a mechanical property at the bulk scale. So, with this uh, I will end my lecture, thank you.